While searching for a cure to the pirate afflicting parks of Le Chac, the fates of Guybrush Treepwood and Morgan Le Fay are blown off course when they are swallowed by a lovelorn leviathan. Much to Morgan and Guybrush's surprise, an uneasy alliance to escape the beast blossoms into a genuine friendship between the pirate and pirate hunter. A tidal shift that leads Treepwood to the elusive fox curing a sponge grande. But Guybrush learns too late that it is the wise pirate who prepares for the inevitable change in the winds as Morgan betrays him and returns him to the scientific clutches of the Marquis de Sange. Thirty thousand pieces of silver, mon petit chouchou. Just as we agreed. It had better be, or I'll cut the difference out of your fluffy wig. I got an idea. Why don't you let me go and I'll pay you double what the Marquis is paying. Don't embarrass yourself, Springwood. I'll auction off my entire collection of autographed sextants. Ah, <laughs> Springwood. You grossly underestimate the value of that which curses through your body. Oh, I've got a pretty good idea. Why my spit alone once won me 8,000 pieces of eight on Booty Island. Then you should die knowing that you gave a priceless gift to science! <gasps> Finally! I've got the sweep wood, I've got the formula, and soon I'll have nothing left than life eternal! Oh, I'm as happy as a penguin sliding on its belly! It's a welcome back party. I hope they brought ice cream cake. I brush Dreepwood. We've been waiting a long time for this. Hey, why can't I stop my legs? What? No! No, come back! This cracker croaker's got a date in the court of pirate law! You test tube tinker and talleyrand! What? And then the scurvy dog will hang. Arr! Arr! You! After him! Hey, I brought you three wood, and you paid me. We're done here. We'll just see about that. Taken to the nearest ship and keel hard until your ravaged skin hangs in tatters from your bleeding. Guilty? But I haven't been charged with anything yet. You haven't? Where's that incompetent prosecutor? Right here, Your Honor. Oh, great. 
Sorry I'm late, Your Eminence, but old Stan had to in flagrante his delicto. And there was a line in the washroom. Belay your excuses, you sniveling sea weasel, and get on with the charges! I've got Grog waiting for me at Club 41! Of course, Your Immensity. Your Honor, pirates and wenches of the gallery. Hey, that's us. This evening I will prove beyond a scintilla of a shadow of a doubt that Guybrush Threepwood is guilty of no fewer than four heinous crimes. I thought there'd be three. Firstly, that he did knowingly engage in a bar fight that horribly injured the beloved feline of local pirate elder, Hemlock McGee. Hey, it's still good for him. Secondly, during this self-same fight, Captain Threepwood spilled boiling nacho sauce on the exposed leg of Bolson Catherine Krebs, hideously scarring one of Flotsam's shapeliest gams. Get him alive! Thirdly, that he did conspire with one Joaquin de Oro to craft and sell counterfeit porcelain power pirates. It's all about spreading the box! And finally, that he folded, spindled, and mutilated this previously pristine ex belonging to Flotsam's newest arrival, Killick Hardtack. What the heck? Um, yeah, he did that to me. Captain Threepwood, having heard the grave charges arrayed against you, how do you plead? Plead guilty, will I get out of here any quicker? Most definitely! Great. Then I plead? After the summary executions by keel hauling, hanging, boiling, and uh, escapism. Escapism? Trust me, kid, you don't want to know. Okay, then. I plead not guilty by reason of insanity. You look pretty sane to me. Sure, now, but any second I could start using monkeys as needle nose pliers or shooting myself out of trebuchets or doing strange things with rubber trees. I'm crazy, I tells you. Crazy. The defendant will cease his inane histrionics or the court will be forced to. to. make out his tongue with a rusty shrimp fork! Okay, no insanity defense. These charges are stupid. And believe me, I know from stupid. Captain Threepwood, you're out of order! I'm out of order. You're out of order. The whole mizzen mastin pirate legal system is out of order. The defendant will shut his festering gob before the court shuts it for him! Do it! Sorry. I plead 1,000% not guilty. Especially that last one about the X. Very well! Let it be recorded that the miserably guilty defendant has entered a plea of not guilty! Now, who would you like to represent your pathetic case? Don't you have some sort of public defender? A public defender? In pirate court? <laughs> a maroon! So that'd be a no, then. Hey, Stan. Why don't you represent me, for old times' sake? You mean those old times when you swindled me out of a ship, stuck me in a coffin for three months, scammed my insurance company, and got me involved with high-risk doubloon derivatives? Uh, yes? Sorry, kid, nothing personal, but I stand to make a bundle in legal fees off these honked-off flotsamites. They really don't like you. I guess I'll represent myself. Captain Threepwood, are you aware of the old pirate court saying? The pirate who represents himself in court has a soon-to-be keel-hauled fool for a client. <laughs> yes, Your Honor, and I am that fool. Fine! Your move, Counselor! Here's your briefs, kid.
Ah, uh, this reminds me of the time I kissed Elaine under the mistletoe, and a rotting corpse fell on me. Hey, Stan! Ah, no fraternizing between the defense and prosecution while court is in session! If you want a gab, call for a recess. Uh, could you read that last bit back for me? Very interesting. I don't even remember saying exsanguinate. No, no, I'm not questioning your professionalism. It's just that I don't even know the meaning of... Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. That paralyzed cat is creepy. That empty nacho plate is making me hungry. I'm surprised Doro ever fell for that. Why is it always an X? Why not T marks the spot? Hey, hardtack! Defense will refrain from addressing the bailiff in open court! Sorry. Sorry. Stinkbeard's common laws for common pirates. Laws? Pirates don't need no stinking laws. Fine, then we'll proceed with the execution! On the other hand, maybe I could use a few good laws right now. Looks like there was one whale of a fender bender while the winds were blowing out. That's why I always sail defensively and carry state arm insurance. Sword of Lustitia? Goddess of Justice, you illiterate swab! The left honorable Justice K.B. Popnecker lived on the bench, died under the table. Right Honorable Justice D.C. Grosscup. 30 convictions, zero acquittals, no survivors. I object! To what? To this trial. To your hat. To the way my beard's itching. I also object to the way that guy's looking at me. Hey. And to this hook! And- Captain Threepwood! You will cease your foolish distractions before we come down and cease them for you! Right! Where were we? If it pleases the court, I'd like to call Bailiff Hardtack to the stand. Bailiff Hardtack! Oh, that's me. Do you swear on Blackbeard's log to tell the truth to the best of your ability as a grog-swilling, backstabbing pirate? I suppose. Bailiff Hardtack, could you tell the court about your claim against Guybrush Threepwood? Well, uh, back on Spinner K, <coughs> I was getting ready to bury me modest chest of treasures, you see. My collection of spaghetti strainers, my silver paprika shaker, and so on. When all of a sudden, this three-foot bloke runs up to me, waving his arms and telling me to look out for a three-headed monkey that's right behind me. <gasps> well, naturally, I turned and looked. But there was nothing there! <coughs> when I regained my composure, Threepwood was nowhere to be found! And worst of all... Yes? He dug up my perfectly good ex! It's ruined now! Oh, come on! He's all yours, buddy. Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Hardtack, you say your ex was ruined when I allegedly dug it up. I. It looks pretty good to me. <laughs> this 
this whole story about your ex is a big fat lie, isn't it? No, sir. Come on, you're lying. Admit it. No, sir. Come on. Oh, you got me, sir. But why? Well, I didn't have anything else to do after you killed me boss and left me without a job. <coughs> oh, I could have charged you with that instead. Oh. Your Honor, I move for a mistrial. Granted! Painless heart attack! As punishment for wasting this court's time, you will be compelled to wear Lizig's wig of foppery until such time as I am no longer tempted to gavel you into a fine paste! Ooh, Ooh it's delightful! I'd like to call Bosun Catherine Krebs to the stand. Catherine Krebs! Do you swear on Blackbeard's log to tell the truth to the best of your ability as a grog swilling backstabbing pirate? Aye. Bosun Krebs, could you tell the court what happened on that fateful day? Aye. I was minding my own business at Club 41 with a mug full of grog and some zesty nachos, when all of a sudden that blindfolded Jasper barreled into me, knocked me nacho sauce into me lap, and gave me this disfiguring scar. Mochi, mochi. Aye, that takes me back. Ooh. Bailiff, supply the prosecutor and the defendant with sketches of the burns for their briefs. Oi, oi, Your Honor. Lots of luck, kid. <laughs> You're lying about this whole nacho business, aren't you? Nay, are you lying about being a mighty pirate? I'll ask the questions here. Come on, you're lying. Admit it. No. Objection, Your Honor. Defense is badgering the witness. Knock it off, Threepwood! Just a moment, Your Honor. Bolson Krebs, you don't really expect this court to believe that the nacho sauce I allegedly spilled onto your leg from this platter actually scarred your leg, do you? Ah, but it did. See for yourself. Hachi machi! I have no more questions for this witness, Your Honor. You may step down, Bosun Krebs. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like to call a recess to confer with my client. Bailiff! Please escort Captain Threepwood to the brig! Oi, oi, Your Honor! Well, at least I'm not about to be dissected by a crazy scientist. Now to break out of here, find a lane, and use La Esponja Grande to... Hey, what happened to my cool voodoo sponge? All possessions will be returned to the prisoner once he has been cleared of all charges. In the likely event that the prisoner is not cleared of all charges, his property will be distributed to his heirs. But I don't have any heirs that I know of. Then they'll be auctioned off at eBay. This part of the wall looks like it's made of pretty loose stuff. I wonder if I could dig my way out. Icky. Hard to believe that nacho sauce could do that. What's that noise? Nothing. What's that noise? Nothing. Hey, guard! What do you want? Aren't I entitled to some bread and water? Bread and water? <laughs> I pride myself on providing Flotsam's prisons with the finest in haute cuisine. Wait here. 
Wait here. Huh. That's funny. Thought he'd never leave. What the? It's solid steel under here. Stupid reinforced wall. What do you know? Guess it wasn't so loose after all. Hey, where's my dinner? My whole cuisine. Oh, the prisoners don't get any food. That's for the gods and judges. Delicious, too. Jerk. <laughs> hey, guard. What do you want? Has this jail got any reading material? I'd suggest reading your legal briefs. You might need them. Good tip. I'll get right on that when I need something to put me to sleep. I want to see my lawyer. Your lawyer? Yeah, you might have heard of him. Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate at law. Fine. All right, Counselor. Judge Grindstump says you got five minutes. That should be more than enough for this piece of scum. I hope you had a good excuse for dragging me out of bed at this ungodly hour. Got a plan to break out of this joint, but I need your help to smuggle in a wombat and two sticks of string cheese. You want me, an officer of the court, to aid in a jailbreak. Why, the mere idea is so preposterous that it's practically postposterous. Why, you... Guard! I'm quite done with my client! I'll get you, Threepwood, if it's the last thing I do! Sorry about that, Mr. Threepwood. I know those prisoners can be a rowdy lot. Make nothing of it, Mr. Hardtack. Now, where can I find a good grog? Club 41's right over there, sir. Hear ye, hear ye. Having finally captured the vile criminal Guybrush Threepwood, the Right Honorable Judge Wallace P. Grindstump has been recalled from his summer vacation to adjudicate and pass sentence on the loathsome reprobate. A public execution has been scheduled for dawn in the town square. Sandwiches will be provided. BYOG. Well, at least there will be sandwiches. Lou? You! Toro? What happened to your eye? I tell you what happened to my eye, smarty guy! When I dug up that phony dark ninja Dave you planted... Allegedly planted? Allegedly planted? I got a speck of dirt lodged in my eye. A week later it got infected, and Dr. Descent had to cut it out! Yeah, I just bet he did. Now I need a glass eye. What are you in for? I got arrested for trying to auction a counterfeit Dark Ninja Day figurine at eBay. eBay? You know, that bay with the auction thing. Oh, yeah. Luckily for me, Stan got me a reduced sentence in exchange for my testimony against you. Me? What did I do? You were the one that made the counterfeit Dave in the first place. Oh, yeah, that. I'm sorry about the jail time, but you've got to stop testifying against me. I've got a wife and scores of pirates to cure. You're going to cure the pox? Eventually, yeah. Oh, I like that. All these pox pirates are always making fun of me for not being poxed. Well, come on then. Let's do some business. Maybe. What can you offer me in return? I've got a line on a genuine Dark Ninja Dave porcelain power pirate autographed by Dark Ninja Dave himself. That is a very poor joke, senor. I'll let you have your pick of my autographed sextants. Ooh, do you have one of those limited edition Vasco de Yama sextants? Yeah, but you can't have that one. Oh, what about the Ferdinand Magelli Ann quad action sextants, hmm? Yeah, but you can't have that one either. On second thought, I really don't want to part with my sextants. I got a crate full of fine leather jackets back in my hold that have your name all over them. No thanks. Leather makes me chafe. 
How about I get you a glass eye for your eye hole? That sounds interesting. It's a deal. But I knew there'd be a big noisy butt somewhere in there. I want a really cool glass eye. And what, pray tell, makes a cool glass eye? It has to have a really cool color. Like the color in the eyes of those nasty boxed pirates when they're really, really angry. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Why do you want a glass eye? An eye patch is much more piratey. Eye patches are so last month. All the cool pirates are getting scary glass eyes these days. But hooks are still cool, right? Arr! I guess, but you really can't beat a glass eye. You know, I can't help but notice that you don't seem to be afflicted by the pox of LeChuck. Oh, don't remind me. All the other pirates have gotten the pox, so why not me? You thought about the possibility that you might not actually be a pirate? I am too a pirate! Okay, okay, you are a pirate. I'm sure the pox will be coming for you any day now. And associating with hardened criminals like you can't be good for my legal situation. I'm out of here. Adios! Dan's Courtroom Souvenir Emporium? What happened to the Keelhauler Gazette offices? The Keelhauler? That's old news, Threepwood. Get it? Old news? <laughs> the whole Keelhauler operation was bought out and shut down by those bigwigs at the Flotsam Times weeks ago. Oh, I bet Davy Nipperkin didn't like that. Are you kidding? Old Nipperkin made out like a bandit. I heard he's getting ready to retire on his share of the sale. Stan? Kybrush Threepwood! Nice to see you out and about, kid! Hope they haven't been treating you too badly in the Hooskow. Well, there is a pretty scary-looking rat in my cell. At least I hope it's a rat. Well, that's just swell, kid. Look, could you get out of the way and make room for some paying customers? What are you doing out here? Shouldn't you be prepping for trial? Hey, no offense, kid, but the day old Stan can't beat you in open court with one wildly flapping arm tied behind his back is the day I haul my corpus juris back to Jambalaya Island for the full restitutio and integrum. Know what I mean? Not really. Exactly. So if you're not preparing for trial, what are you doing out here? Following Stan's rule number one, ABM. ABM? Always be merchandising. People love following the trials of famous pirates, even B-list pirates like yourself. B-list? That's why old Stan got all the souvenirs and timeless keepsakes you'll ever need to remind you of this month's Trial of the Century! How are sales going? Great. Celebrity merchandise is always a good investment, especially if you suspect that the celebrity in question is about to become a wind chime in the gallows. Nothing sells like dead celebrities. Yeah? Well, I don't plan on dying today. And I didn't plan to wear the same jacket for 20 years, but here we are. Stan, about these charges. Sorry, kid, can't talk. Conflict of interest, attorney, pirate privilege, and all that stuff. But la 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 la, not talking to you about it. I know I'll kick myself for asking, but what sorts of trial souvenirs are you selling? The question you should be asking is what kind of souvenirs am I not selling? Behold, the People vs. Threefwood Collection! Hey, a little me! That's right, Threefwood, a faithful reproduction right down to the lacy garter belt. Hey, I only wore those once. It is I, Guybrush Threefwood, mighty pirate. That sounds nothing like me. Yeah, I know. To be honest, your real voice didn't focus test all that well. What's that? That, my piratey friend, is a little novelty I like to call Draw the Beard on the Guy Brush. Using the power of magnetism and iron shavings, you can give Flotsam's most notorious criminal an infinite array of amusing and degrading hairstyles. Observe. What the? This one doesn't have a magnet. And look, it's leaking iron shavings. This is what you get when you use shoddy Fat Island labor. Is that supposed to be you? None other. Now you and your friends can relive the trial of the century while lounging around in this comfortable polyblend t-shirt, emblazoned with the iconic image of yours truly, a crusading attorney bringing his no-holds-barred brand of justice to Flotsam Island. Mm, on second thought, say no more. 
matter how many times I see it, I can't get over your jacket. You like it? I just had it in for its annual re-stitching and de-resing. I noticed that you're remarkably free of the pox. Nothing remarkable about it at all, Threepwood. Haven't you been paying attention? The pox only affects real, 100% honest to Blackbeard pirates. Now, I've been many things in this life. A salesman, real estate agent, a troubadour, stevedore, ralphador, and even a brief but memorable stint as an exotic dancer to pay my way through law school. But one thing I'm not, and never will be, is a pirate. Ah. See you in court, Stan. Hey, that's pretty funny. It's a broken, draw a beard on Guybrush toy. Hmm. Looks like it's leaking iron fillings. Looks like someone's finally getting around to cleaning the carpet that got, um, stained during my bar fight. Snazzy. I still don't know what the 41 stands for, though. That lamp is leaking oil. Not just any oil. Manatee oil! Oh, that's not right. I can't pick up hot manatee oil with my bare hands. Now that the winds are blowing in again, Flotsam Island is once more soaking up most of the pox of the chuck. Ladies night, Club 41 open to the public. Well, that's a welcome change of pace. I wonder if Club 41's changed its restrictive policies. Ah, Club 41. Nothing screams pirate bar like the aroma of moldy grog sprinkled with just a hint of sea spray and shattered dreams. Hmm. I will double your quadrupled rate. Keep your gold, silk pants. You can't afford me anymore. But you must break Sweepwood out of jail and bring him back to me! He is the only one who has the poxalicious strains that I need. You're a little behind the times, Demange. I'm pox-free and fit as a fiddle. See? <gasps> Impossible. Nothing's impossible when Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate, is involved. And after I cure my wife and everyone else... I'll... Wife? Yeah. She was standing right next to me when LeChuck exploded, so the pox hit her pretty hard. I want you to hunt down and capture this wife of Guybrush Threepwood. Hey! What part of Non do you not comprend But I need her! She's the only other pirate who could possibly have the Threepwood strain of the pox! Then get her yourself. My dear Mademoiselle Lefley. I don't get people. I hire people like you to get them for me. And if you won't get them, then maybe I'll find someone to get you. I don't like to be threatened. Oh! Oh, my phalange! What the? Oh! <sighs> that was a very, very bad mistake, mademoiselle. Well, it wouldn't be the first! Jerk. Not that I'm complaining, but why did you turn down to Singe's contract to hunt down my wife? I may be a backstabbing mercenary, but even I have some standards. Sure, now you have standards. Shame they couldn't have shown up before you, oh, cut off my hand or knock me unconscious and drag me back to Flotsam Island. What can I say? I'm complicated. What did Desinge want with Elaine, anyway? You heard the man. Something to do with your unique strain of box. I guess he thinks your wife has it, too. You look uncharacteristically grim. Eh, it's been one of those days. Oh, I know what you mean. Betraying your childhood hero can really take it out of you. Hey, that was just business. Your business sucks more than the winds of Flotsam. Sometimes. What are those scary-looking drinks? They're a row of Blood Island volcano shots. They look... painful. Only the first one. Yikes. 
think you should know that I'm still really angry with you. Would it help if I bought you a drink? What, so you can poison me? I'll pass. I noticed that you're without pox. I'm pox-free. Tested on a regular basis. Well, do you know why? Probably because I'm not really a pirate, since I'm a pirate hunter. Gotta like a pox that respects minor semantical distinctions. You know, if you have even a scintilla of a guilty conscience, I could really use your help. Listening? Well, there's this trial going on. So I've heard. Some guy was trying to tell me that it's the trial of the century! E, 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 Yeah, well, I could really use some trumped up evidence. Or a few intimidated witnesses. Or maybe a well-placed briber tent? You couldn't afford me. Of course. How silly of me. It's all about the pieces of eight with you, isn't it? Not always. I also accept pieces of nine. Changed your mind about helping me with my legal troubles? The pirate legal system and I don't exactly get along, and if we did, I wouldn't do pro bono work. Well, I can see you've got inner demons to wrestle with, so I'll just get on with my life. Thanks. And watch out for DeSinge. That thing he did with his finger was unnatural. Hmm. Ah, this must be the screaming narwhal that my ship is named after. Creepy. Now that I've spent some time inside these docile Don Juans of the Deep, I feel kind of queasy about seeing their heads mounted on a wall. Duh. Judge Grindstump? Oh, please. No need to be so formal. In here, I'm just plain old W.P. Grindstump, owner and proprietor of Club 41. Aren't you a little upset that I'm running around free? Heavens no! <laughs> what kind of pirate town would this be if we didn't condone the occasional jailbreak? What a remarkably progressive attitude. Besides, it's not as though you can really escape the swinging sword of Flotsam Justice. What with these blasted winds blowing in again? Ladies Night is looking a little, uh, grim. Well, it's early. Uh, once we got the buffet table laid out, this place will be hotter than the devil's knickers! <laughs> So you're really the owner of Club 41? Have been ever since I won it from the original owner in a dart tournament a few years back. <laughs> Poor old guy never knew what hit him. And by hit him you mean... A dart! Right in the old noggin! I've been wondering, why is this place called Club 41 anyway? You know, I don't rightly know. <coughs> Uh, the last owner never got a chance to tell me before he succumbed to his dart-related injuries. <laughs> Barkeep, I'd like to order a drink. Brilliant! Will you be paying with doubloons, triploons, coupons, or flotsamian fur shafts? Actually, I'm a little light right now. Oh, no problem. I'll start up a tab. You will? That's so unlike, well, every place I've ever been in my life. Well... It's not like you're going to skip town on me, am I right? <laughs> Set me up with a grogatini. With a twist. Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't serve grogatinis anymore. The pirates kept gagging on the little porcelain swords. Set me up with a line of Blood Island volcano shots. Me pleasure! These come with our complimentary Club 41 insulated volcano shot glasses. Hewn out of molten lava! They can keep hot liquids hot for a week! Impressive! Ooh, that's some hot grog on grog action. I'll just save this last one for later. Nice dartboard. Isn't it, though? 
Ah, it was one of the few things I managed to salvage when I was washed ashore on Flotsam all those years ago. Can I play around? Unfortunately, the darts were lost a few weeks ago, during a bar fight. <coughs> and pity, too. What with the annual Flotsam Island Dart Tournament tomorrow night? What's that artistic abomination? Ah, that be a painting of Flotsam Island's notorious jungle beast, painted by our own Hemlock McGee. Hemlock? Really? Aye, no one knows more about our legendary beastie than old Hemlock. I wonder what happened to Murray. Well, that's a strange place for a sugar sack. I keep it up there to draw away the ants. Ooh. What's this? That'll be Club 41's famous Flotsam Island Ladies' Night Buffet Table. In a few hours, it'll be spilling over with flaming chocolate cupcakes, barbecued narwhal horns, deep-fried petty fours, and all that other girly stuff that our swashbuckling lady pirates love. Occupied! Sorry. As a younger pirate, I used to lie awake on the deck of my ship and gaze at the seagulls as they majestically swooped and bobbed through the evening sky. And then they started pooping on me. So I stopped doing that. Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate at law. Oh, Councillor Threepwood! <coughs> what can I do for you? No hard feelings about being humiliated in open court? No worries, mate. I've been humiliated so often it's kind of second nature to me by now. Great. Besides, I didn't really think it was much of a case anyway. But that Stan fella, he seemed to think I could make a pretty piece of it off of your untimely execution. So I figured, huh, what the heck? What are you doing on Flotsam Island anyway? Well, <coughs> after that series of misadventures on Spinner K, I found myself without a captain or a ship. Sorry about that. Eh, it happens. So I drifted for a bit before landing here on Flotsam. <coughs> Now I've hired on as Judge Grindstock's personal bailiff slash chef, creating all sorts of new delicacies for his night club. It's a bit of a dream come true, it is. How's the Pox of Lechuck treating you? Oh, it's not so bad. I mean, there is the incessant drive to commit acts of monstrous evil, of course. It's a bit of a drag on the social life. But my pillaging swing has never been better. So, uh, I guess you could say it's a bit of a wash. <coughs> hmm. Tell you one thing I didn't expect. The slaw cravings. I mean, honestly, mate, what's that all about? I'd like to go into the jungle. I need to talk to a large Buddha lady about a not-so-large sponge. Sorry, mate. I'm afraid I can't allow prisoners to wander out into the jungle. You might get lost or go into hiding. But I'm not a prisoner. I'm the prisoner's attorney, Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate at law. Hmm. Well, that is a stumper, all right. But uh, just to be on the safe side, I think it would be for the best if I kept both Guybrush Threepwoods out of the jungle until their trials are over. That's 
really um something. Hey, isn't she a beauty? It's a prototype of my swashbuckling Susie, long lasted leg lamp. <laughs> that crystal on top will glow for days. Don't you think it's a little tacky? Nah, pirates love this kind of stuff. It ain't like an alpaca. Your fancy cryptozoology tricks won't fool me, laddie. <laughs> Hello there, uninformed man on the street. What do you want? <coughs> Don't tell me you're still blowing glass. Surely a dry cleaning business would be more profitable. It just shows what you know, Binky. People are clamoring for Crypt Digit's unbreakable tubes. Clamoring! What people? Well, just one person, really. But he ordered a huge supply. Don't ask me why. Why? I told you not to ask me that! <laughs> why did someone order all those tubes? I told you not to ask me that! I told you to get it! I must have that leg lamp. I must? Forget it, Skinny. I'm not letting go of a perfectly good prototype. She hasn't got a mark on her. Well, sure, but hold on. Did you just call me Skinny? I've seen skeletons fatter than you. It's not my fault you associate with the obese undead. I must have that leg lamp. I must? Forget it, Skinny. I'm not letting go of a perfectly good prototype. She hasn't got a mark on her. I see you can make a glass leg, but tell me, can you make a glass eye? Aye. But not just any glass eyes. Genuine imitation eyes made from the crystal wreaths themselves. Genuine imitation eyes? That's right. They'll imitate the eye color of anyone they see. You just point them at someone's eyes, give them a few seconds to set, and shazam! All new eye color. When you got a color you like, just pop it in your eye socket, and it'll stay that way forever. I'm intrigued and cautiously optimistic. How much? Here, try out this defective one for free. Defective? Aye. It's a little nearsighted. So you'll have to get up real close to the subject to capture their eye color. Thanks. I take back all the nasty things I wrote in my diary about you. How does it feel to be hideously diseased? How do you think it feels? <laughs> mm, bad, I'd say. Pretty bad. You got that right, Missy. Are you not outraged by this ridiculous trial? Well, I'm just glad that scum sucking Threepwood will finally be brought to justice. Uh, I'm Threepwood. Speaking of which, shouldn't you be in a holding cell or something? We, uh, get a ten minute break every hour. It's the law. I'll see you in your, um, pectorals later. Yeah, well, the three of us will be waiting. Well, blow me down, Glassworks. Oh, now I get it. Look, it ain't like an alpaca. Your fancy cryptozoology tricks won't fool me, laddie. I don't want to dig my hook into that. I don't know where it's been. What's that? Arr, you best watch your step. that be a puddle of molten glass? It'll cool down in a few seconds, but until it does, it'll melt your boots off. Insulated cup that Club 41 uses to serve its Blood Island volcano shots. I better get some of this before it cools. Mmm, warm.
doctor is busy! He must be really busy if he needs all those exclamation points. It's Jacques, the electromagnetic monkey. <laughs> Don't worry, little guy. I'll liberate you. Somehow. Let's see if this will work. Aha! Come on, let's get you out of here. Paralyzed cat is creepy. Hi there, Twinkle Toes. Enjoy your last moments of freedom, cause you're gonna pay for what you did to Miss Pretty Whiskers. I'd be happy to pay. Do you accept traveler's checks? How's Miss Grungy Whiskers doing? Her name isn't Grungy Whiskers, you lover licker. It's Miss Pretty Whiskers. Drop the charges and I'll spare your life. Ah! <coughs> life ain't hardly worth living without the sound of Miss Pretty Whiskers' delicate pitter pat on the bar floor. I'm sure she feels the same way about the delicate pitter pat of your stumps. How's the box treating you? Oh, not too bad. I didn't really need that lung I coughed up. Yeah, vestigial lungs are the worst. What exactly are you doing? Mixing up Miss Pretty Whiskers' food. What's it to you? Can I have some? No. I hear you may know something about Flotsam's so-called jungle beast. None have seen the jungle beast, but tis the scariest, foulest, melanest thing you ever didn't see. A dark jungle god that walks the land only by dead of night. Dark jungle god? Aye, twas said to live within the stomach of the god of death, feasting upon corpses. Until one day, death ate some bad shellfish and upchucked the jungle beast into existence. <sighs> but if you haven't seen it, how do you know it exists? Because it eats to appease the beast. We've left many a fleshy sacrifice on the jungle altar. By morning, the meat disappears from the altar without a trace. Disappearing meat. Yep, jungle god's the only explanation. See ya. That looks unappetizing. Stay away from Miss Pretty Whiskers food, you fiend. Cat eats that? Well, I thought she was paralyzed. She is! <laughs> I have to feed it to her through a straw! Ooh. Hey, look! A five headed bonobo! What? I didn't see nothing! <laughs> Sorry, must have been a weather balloon. Morgan left Mr. Winslow circling the island, just outside the reach of Flotsam's winds. Wow, that bacon grease is still burning. I could roll back to the Screaming Narwhal, but without La Esponja Grande, I'll never be able to cure Elaine. And if I show up without Elaine's wedding ring, she'll probably kill me. It's molten glass. Inside a glass. Trippy. Whoops! Hey! Arr. Now look what you did! Arr. 
clumsy clam clipper! You ruined my prototype! Now I'll have to start all over! Arr! So if it's messed up, can I have it? Fine, take it! Just get out of me sight! Arr! This ought to help me get a leg up in the trial. Icky. Hard to believe that nacho sauce could do that. I can't pick up hot manatee oil with my bare hands. I almost feel guilty about this. Almost. Nothing like a little hot wax on a cold, flotsam night. nothing in the cup to splash on the leg. Icky. Hard to believe that nacho sauce could do that.
don't need a cup of that. Brush Threepwood, mighty pirate at law. Oh, Councillor Threepwood! <laughs> what can I do for you? I'd like to return to court to defend my client. All righty then, let's find Judge Grindstump. The Pirate Court of Flotsam Island is back in session. The Right Honorable Wallace P. Grindstump presiding. Let's keep it moving, Captain Threepwood! I'd like to call Hemlock McGee to the stand. Hemlock McGee! What's that? Oh. And do you swear on Blackbeard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Pinky. I knew Blackbeard back when he was bloody black peach fuzz. Just let me at him. Let me at him! Ensign McGee, it's your contention that Captain Threepwood injured your cat. Injured? He practically crushed him. Hit him right in the puss with a stuffed manatee, and he did. And how is your cat today? See for yourself. The poor dear is paralyzed with fear. I have to feed her through a tube. Oh, my poor Miss Pretty Whiskers. Oh, my poor little Pretty Whiskers. Pretty Whiskers? Your witness, kid. This whole cat thing is a scam to get back at me for getting you kicked out of Club 41, isn't it? How can you look at my sad little fuzzy cat and call me a liar? <laughs> oh, just look at her. Oh. Just a moment, Your Honor. Jump, girl. Go to your master. <laughs> Miss Pretty Whiskers! Captain Freeboy, quit tormenting Ensign McGee's cat and get on with your case! Assuming you have one! Oh, there's a monkey in my pocket. He's attracting all my change. His tail is a magnet and I think that he's got mange. Your Honor, pirates and assorted buccaneers, Hemlock McGee has asserted that it was I, Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate, that brought about the horrible emotional scars that even now leave poor Miss Pretty Whiskers paralyzed with fear. But I put it to you that it was not your humble defendant who traumatized Hemlock's unfortunate feline, but a far more insidious assailant, the one who's in this very courtroom as I speak, Jacuzzi, Jacques the Monkey. What? Objection, there's no evidence of monkey play here. No? Let's ask the victim. <laughs> Miss Pretty Whiskers! See? Miss Pretty Whiskers is up and about and seeking revenge just like a good pirate cat should. Miss Pretty Whiskers, come back! <laughs> we'll get our revenge together. Your Honor, I rest my case. Mr. Prosecutor! Well, considering that my client and evidence just ran out the door, I guess old Stan's gonna have to drop this one. Good idea! In the case of McGee and Pretty Whiskers versus Threepwood, the Pirate Court of Flotsam finds in favor of the defendant, Guy Brush Threepwood! Come on, Judge, get him with the pox! Don't you make me send the bailiff up there! I'll have to get it to look at someone else's eye before it takes on a color. I don't think that would be admissible as evidence.
Your Honor, I'd like to request a change of venue. Where to? Oh, how about back at your place? Just you, me, a jug of grog, a loaf of bread, and some scandalous legal briefs. That free boy will terminate his clumsy and off-putting attempts to seduce this court at once! Make me uncomfortable at dinner. And Skippy! Hold that crazy pose. Gotcha! Right! Where were we? I'd like to call Joaquin Jacinto de Meara Alfonso de Oro to the stand. Joaquin de Oro! Do you swear on Blackbeard's log to tell the truth to the best of your ability as a grog swilling, backstabbing pirate? See? Si? Senor de Oro. Captain de Oro. Yes, of course. Why are you here today? I was recently arrested for trying to sell a counterfeit Dark Ninja Dave porcelain power pirate figurine. A counterfeit figurine. Crafted by Guybrush Threepwood. Actually, that, that wasn't so surprising. Your witness, Counselor. Senor Dora, is it not true that you're an inveterate liar? No. So it is true that you're an inveterate liar? Uh, no, yes, I don't know. What does inveterate mean? Objection! Your Honor, the defense is attempting to confuse the witness with big words! Sustained! The defense will take into account the witness's limited vocabulary! Uh, just a moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'd like to call a recess to confer with my client. Bailiff, please escort Captain Threepwood to the brig. Aye, aye, Your Honor. Hey, guard, what do you want? I want to see my lawyer. Again? I'm not getting any smarter. What? Captain Doro? Do you have it? One nigh indestructible glass eye. Pox colored, just like all the cool pirates are wearing. Hachi Santo Pica and Santa Fe! Ay, 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 ay! My eye is really scary! Now, according to Crimp Digit, all you have to do to set it is pop it in your eye socket. Ooh. How do I look? Dangerous. I think you mean dangerously cool, eh? Sure, whatever. Now, about your testimony. No problem, mi amigo. Just call me back to the stand and ask me about this. Your Dark Ninja Dave Porcelain Power Pirates treasure map? I'll just smuggle this into here. In my, uh, let's say, mouth. I better get back into court and introduce this disturbingly moist map into evidence. I hope Miss Pretty Whiskers appreciates all the iron supplements I've given her. Hi there, Double Peg. How's Miss Trashy Whiskers doing? Trashy Whiskers? 
This is not Smucker Smucker. <laughs> Get some of this incredible bacon grease. There. Now my jacket and my pants smell like bacon. Ow! What the heck is Desinge doing up there anyway? Ooh. Sizzly. You know, if I was a little more scientifically inclined, I might be worried about the effects this stuff is having on any future generations of three points. Hard to believe that nacho sauce could do that. Hmm, no match here. Bingo! Looks like Captain Catherine's case is nacho good after all. you. I'd like to return to court to defend my client. All righty then. Let's find Judge Grindstump. The Pirate Court of Flotsam Island is back in session. The Right Honorable Wallace P. Grindstump presiding. I'm as grog, Captain. I'd like to recall Captain Doro to the stand. Can someone pull Dororo out of his cell? The court would like to remind Captain Doro that he is still under oath. See? Captain Doro, what can you tell me about this map? Objection! Defense Exhibit 42, Your Honor. This is the map the witness used to find his Dark Ninja Dave Power Pirate. I'll allow it, but not your eternally flapping mouth, you festering chum hole! Continue. I purchased this map at Yibe six months ago from a traveling salesman with a plaid jacket and waving arms. He said that it was an authentic Dark Ninja Day Porcelain Power Pirates treasure map, but I have since learned that it was just as counterfeit as the Power Pirate it led me to. And who was the dastardly swindler who sold you this map? It was... Hey, would you look at that? I misfiled my glorious Mundus. Your Honor, on behalf of the Porcelain Power Pirates Corporation, I'd like to ask that all charges pertaining to the unfortunate counterfeiting of the Dark Ninja Dave action figure be dropped against Captains Joaquin de Oro and Guybrush Threepwood. Smart move, Counselor! In the matter of Porcelain Power Pirates versus De Oro, De Oro versus Threepwood, etc., 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 this court finds in favor of the defendants! Call this justice? Where's the hangings? You want hangings? Just keep it up, you swabs! I'd like to recall Bosun Krebs to the stand. Catherine Krebs! Now, oh, remember, darling, you're still under oath. I. Your 
Your Honor. I'd like to introduce this leg lamp into evidence as proof that Bosun Catherine Krebs is lying about her so-called nacho sauce burn. This proves nothing! Objection, Your Honor. The scars on this leg-shaped lamp may look like my clients, but who knows how they got there? I'm glad you asked. So you see, Your Honor, Catherine's distinctive burns were not caused by Club 41's nacho sauce, but by an unlikely combination of scalding fluids found throughout Flotsam Island. Isn't that true, Bosun Krebs? Answer the question, <coughs> you she-devil! It's true. After Guybrush knocked that platter of nachos onto my lap, I saw my chance for revenge and concocted this foolish scheme. Revenge? You still don't remember me? The woman whose ship you sunk? Who spent years languishing in prison for your crimes? The woman whose husband you humiliated in that creepy karaoke contest? Oh, sorry. I'm drawing a blank. Arr! Your Honor, I move that Bosun Catherine Krebs' charge be dropped. Counselor! I got nothing, Your Honor. Very well! In the matter of Krebs versus Threepwood, the Pirate Court of Flotsam Island finds in favor of the defendant Guy Brush Threepwood! Force, force, no! off, you lot! Ah, uh, let's see here. Cleared? Hmm. Dropped? Hmm, yes. Congratulations, Captain Threepwood! It appears that you have successfully gotten yourself out from under your various civil charges. Shiver me timbers, Stumpy. I guess I'll be going now. Hold on, what's this? There appears to be a criminal charge on the other side of this blasted paper. Huh? Assault with molten nacho cheese isn't criminal? What else is there? The creation, incubation, dissemination, proliferation, and mastication of a pox or pox-like affliction. A class one felonious act here on Flotsam. Oh, right. How do you plead? Not guilty. On what grounds? I may have aided in its creation, incubation, dissemination, and proliferation, but mastication? That doesn't even make sense. Are you suggesting that this court doesn't know the meaning of the words it uses? Uh, no. Good! Box isn't so bad. Everyone's tough as nails now and can do neato demon things with their eyes. It's evil! It made me clean! Holy crap! I got bubbles on me fundament! Okay, okay, it's pretty bad. The pox isn't my fault, it's LeChuck's! It all started with the cursed cutlass of Kaflu. Off the rock of gelato, LeChuck was doing something evil with monkeys, and I was all brrrr, but then LeChuck broke my root beer bottle, and I had to substitute some of the voodoo lady's ingredients, and then LeChuck turned into a human, and all this voodoo went boom, and... Well, it's not my fault. Your Honor, the defendant is hand-waving. And believe me, I know from hand-waving. But seriously, we all know that the cloud of pox vexing this fair island arrived soon after the defendant and his oozing appendage crept upon these shores. Oh, Disgust-depressing it was. Then, after infecting everyone in sight, the pox cloud magically blew away at exactly the same moment that Guybrush sailed away, stealing Flotsam's only ship, I might add. I won that ship, fair and square. Now, Threepwood has returned, and so has the cloud of pox. What a coincidence. And yet here he stands concocting fanciful stories of a human lechuk, voodoo cutlasses, and a so-called rock of gelato. Well, Threepwood, do you have any witnesses to your unlikely tale? I do. She's... Wonder Bunny. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Fast, ye blubbering belugas! I'm sucking your port! Bring me all your spoiled swags, booty and boodle! Lane, let's plunder more bunny, please. Thank you! Me bunny lass! Step into me captain's quarters and let me ravish you oh, silly! Oh boy! Hi! To finally hold you in me arms again! It makes me want to... What's this? The scent of betrayal? Who is this tawdry witch? Uh, nobody. No one. 
She'll die by me rusty bird! There goes my witness. And she must be summoned! Bailiff, serve the woman immediately! Yes, sir! Ah, uh, you'd better be using the voodoo summons. That saucy sea hag doesn't look like she'd be respecting the customs of pirate law. Aye, aye, sir. But first, hold the defendant's pox-spreading keister back to the brig! All right, you. Stay put until I summon your ball and chain. Um, I wouldn't call her that. She... Ow! My... Oof! Take exception. What happened to you? Oh, I'll tell you what happened. I went to Club 41 to hand this summons to your better half, and she backhanded me right out of the bar. Oh. Ouch. If you want that banshee on the stand, you're gonna have to serve her yourself. Go see if the local doctor can fix me jawbone. What the? Ah, oh, ladies' night. Guybrush, your wife has lost her mind, and you're about to lose a limb, you sea cow. Elaine, sugar cakes. Let's stop fighting and work this out over a nice cold light grog. It's or yours, Bilge Boy! Or you two can just figure out this little misunderstanding on your own. I'll be over here appreciating my head's ability to stay attached to my neck. Hmm, a recipe for something called a Fat Island Fuzzy Nostril. The only way to drag Elaine into court is to get this voodoo summons into her hands. Hey, darling. What? Would you mind taking this? Only if you don't mind taking this! Morgan! What do you think you're doing? Uh, don't ask me! Ask your crazy wife! I'm gonna run you through, you high seas hussy! Ladies, please. There's plenty of guy brush throughput to go around. Well, that won't be when I'm done with ya. Get over yourself, Threepwood! Yikes! Hey, Morgan, I think you're losing your edge. I'll show you an edge! <laughs> Elaine, you should know that Morgan and I spent a few nights together inside of a manatee. What? Uh, uh, You're a dog, Guybrush Streetwood! <laughs> Can't you two just work it out over a nice grogatini? See, Guybrush Streetwood is buying me a drink? Over your dead body, Trollop! Who are you calling Trollop, Schooner Mom? Oh boy. Wow, Morgan, you're pretty handy with a sword. Is that so? What else is she handy with? Uh, um... Ah! Elaine, Tuckle Bear, Morgan's all bark and no bite. You want bite? Uh, you got it. And I'll throw in the bark for free. Ha! Whoa! Huh? Okay, I'm gonna go think of something clever. Try not to kill each other while I'm away. Yeah! Yikes! Get out of the way, you blithering hunk of man meat! I won't be able to get any closer to the dartboard with those hell kisses in the way. Okay, this is really flattering, but let's calm down and talk this out like adults. I'll be 
calm when the flea's been filleted like a fish. Yeah. Arr. WP? I can't talk now, Captain. I've got to protect my bottles from these banshees. Ah, this must be the screaming narwhal that my ship is named after. Creepy. Bartender's recipe for a scab island sling. Seems pretty simple. There's nothing left of this buffet but a few scraps of tofana tea paste and a light ranch dressing. Hey, Krebs! What do you want? You're not upset about the trial, are you? Why would I possibly be upset by the fact that I hideously disfigured myself in a quest for long-delayed vengeance, only to have it cruelly snatched away at the last moment? About your quest for vengeance? I'm afraid I still don't remember you. You don't remember? How could you forget how you sank me Marlin hunting ship off the coast of Snark Island? Or the time you framed me for mopery on Wurtling Shars? Uh, unless I've taken too many blows to the head, I'm pretty sure I've never been to any of those places or done any of those things. Well, you may not remember Boss and Catherine C. Krebs, but you can be sure that there'll always be a black mark next to the name of Guybrush Q. Thrapewood. Wait, did you say Guybrush Q. Threepwood? Aye, and a fowler name never escaped me lips. But it's the wrong name. I'm Guybrush U. Threepwood. What? Yeah, your vendetta must be with the other Guybrush Threepwood. I should have realized. You know, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. I keep getting his mail, too. You're not still upset about the whole hideously scarring your leg in a bid to seek unholy vengeance against the wrong target thing, are you? Tell me, did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell out of pirate heaven? No, but this will. Stay away from Guybrush, you sea hog! what I always wanted. An ant-infested sack of sugar. Four! Yikes! Yeah, would you mind steering clear of the dart board? And now that I've found me darts, I need to practice before tomorrow night's tournament. WP? Captain Threepwood, what can I do you for? Would you mind knocking it off with the darts for a minute? Not on your life! I need to get in a week's worth of practice before tomorrow night's tournament, and who knows how long those hellions will stay out of my way! Looks like ladies' night has picked up a bit up a little too much for my taste. These she-beasts have scared away all me eligible hard-drinking, hard-spending pirate bachelors. Barkeep, I'd like to order a drink. What'll it be? Can you make one of these Fat Island fuzzy nostrils? Aye, aye, Captain. While you're making that, I'll just... Order up! One Fat Island Fuzzy Nostril! Heavy on the fuzz. That was absurdly fast. Arr! Libations! Ah, gimme! Yo, what was that? Hey, 
What's this piece of paper stuff? It's a recipe for a drink called a Tri Island Tuna Colada. Looks complicated. Towel, sir. Thanks. Ooh, really needed that. Hey, Krebs. What do you want? And it's nice to see one female pirate in this bar isn't a fight crazed wackadoodle. Oh, I am. I'm just loading up on carbs before joining the fight. Doesn't pay to have a sugar drop in the middle of one of these things, you know. What you gonna do with all that gold? All what gold? All that gold inside your chest. Stay, Stay away, away from, from Guybrush, Guybrush, you sea hog! WP? Marky, I'd like to order a drink. What'll it be? Can you make one of these? A Tri Island Tuna Colada? Arr, that takes me back. I haven't made one of these since I was a bosun under Captain Bo. But can you make one? I'm really in the mood. Aye, but it'll take some doing to scrounge up the ingredients. Take your time. I'll just put this here for safekeeping. Done! One Tri Island Tuna Colada! Now I can get back to me darts! Arr! Libations! Ah, Jimmy! Hey, ladies! What?! Elaine, Tuckle Bear, Morgan's all bark and no bite. You want bite? Uh, you got it! And I'll throw in the bark for free! Huh? Good for nothing words getting in the way of my killing. Honey, you are formally summoned to appear before the court of Judge Grindstump in the case of the people of Flotsam vs. Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate, TM. Phew! Now I know who wears the daddy pants in the relationship. You stay away from my boy's pants, or I'll hang you from my Jolly Roger, you Jezebel! And you, don't think you can totter around with some tart and not get a fistful of what? She's a catch. And conveniently not a rotten double-crosser. I told you I had a job to do. Sure, just doing your job. Tell me. Aside from all the silver, how are the benefits? Guybrush. Do you get health care for the repetitive stress injuries caused by all the backstabbing and cutting off people's hands? I said I was sorry. Sorry? I can't pick my left nostril without risking a lobotomy. What if I... What if nothing? Goodbye, Morgan. I've got a wife to cure and an island to save. Mrs. Threepwood. Please, tell the court how this horrible pox is all LeChuck's fault. LeChuck? That stick in the mud wouldn't know a good pox if it kicked him in the fundament. Heck, there wouldn't even be a pox if you'd gone through with the voodoo lady's recipe properly. But no, you had to wave that root beer bottle around like some sort of conquering hero. Oh, look at me! I be Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate! Next thing I know, you try to replace root beer with root grog and bam! Pucks all over the place. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Okay. Honey, why don't you please tell everyone how I've been trying to find a cure for the pox? Don't you honey me, you two-timing cannon scrubber! 
I bet all this talk of looking for La Esponja Grande was all plot to spend time canoodling with your little privateering she-slag. La Esponja Grande, yes, it's right over there, see? Sure it is. Could you give the court some idea of what a fine, upstanding pirate your husband is? Well, let's see. When I first met him, he was breaking into my mansion to steal a statue. Later, after shanghaiing a crew to take him to Monkey Island, he totally failed to rescue me from the evil clutches of the ghost pirate LeChuck, so I had to dress up a couple of monkeys in a bridal gown. This may have been a bad line of questioning. Then he left me hanging over a pit while he went looking for the treasure of Big Whoop. I didn't hear from him for three years after that. Turned me into a bleeding statue. Left the seat up. Oh, and that's not even mentioning all the times I found myself tied up, manacled, or otherwise incarcerated because of his blithering idiocy. You're too good for him, love. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Honey, why don't you please tell everyone how I've been trying to find a cure for the pox? Don't you honey me, you two-timing cannon scrubber! I bet all this talk of looking for La Esponja Grande was all plot to spend time canoodling with your little privateering she-slag! La Esponja Grande, yes, it's right over there, see? Sure it is. I'd like a second to think about my next move, Your Honor. Make it fast! Your character witness is oozing all over my courtroom! Honey, look! They confiscated your ring! You let someone take it from you? Didn't I tell you never to let it out of your sight? Yeah, but... But me no buts, love of mine! Your Honor, Buccaneers of Flotsam, you all believe that I, Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate, have brought this horrible pox to your shores. Off with it! Run him off the plank! Into the jungle beast! What if I were to tell you that I could tame this unruly witness, prove my good intentions, and begin the process of curing you all of this hideous voodoo pox all in one fell swoop? Hmm, this is a... I don't know. Feed maybe. Into the jungle beast! Your Honor, I object. Defense is grasping at sponge-shaped straws here. Denied! But get on with it, Captain! The hangman gets overtime if we keep him up after midnight! With pleasure, Your Honor. Wenches and pirates, I give you Exhibit S, the wonder of La Esponja Grande. I thought it'd be bigger. Now behold, as a simple exfoliating motion of La Esponja Grande washes away the pox, restoring my wife to her usual mostly pleasant demeanor. Sugar cakes? Off with his head! Get that piece of seaweed off me, you deep sea doily diver! Oh. Does the defense have any other pointless arguments it would like to make? Uh, this is sort of all I got. Then, by the power vested in me by the put upon pirates of Flotsam Island, I summarily sentence you to be hanged by your pox spreading neck until you are right there. What? Woof. What is the meaning of this? My name is LeChuck, and I can tell you exactly what Guybrush did. LeChuck? I thought he was a ghost. I heard he was a zombie. Don't listen to him! You see, Your Honor, the pox is all my fault. Listen to him! For decades, I dabbled in the dark forces of voodoo, clamoring for power. I hungered for it. I yearned for it. I pillaged, plundered, and killed for it. I can attest to all of this. And it was my accumulated voodoo that infected you all. Dark, evil voodoo that was explosively released when I was once again defeated by the perpetually heroic Guybrush Threepwood. He's not kidding. I've killed him, like, five times. So you see, Guybrush Threepwood is not the source of this pox. I am. And I hereby throw myself upon the mercy of this court, or lack thereof. Off with your head! But wait, there's more! It turns out I had an unknown silent power urging me down those darkened voodoo corridors. A power far more insidious than I could ever hope to be. 
I submit to the court this journal, property of <gasps> the Wild <gasps> Bear, the Voodoo Lady. <gasps> Ooh, that creepy lady who lives in the shack? What the what? In these pages, you will find detailed plans laid out by the Voodoo Lady over the course of many years to manipulate my never-ending rise to power, my hunger for voodoo. My seemingly endless cycle of ironically comical death and disturbing resurrection. My obsession with the darling Elaine. It's all because of her. Off with her head! Eat it to the jungle beast! It can't be true, can it? Order! Order! I hereby call for the release of Guybrush Threeport and the immediate imprisonment of LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady! To the brig with both of them! <gasps> I've added up to me eye patch with all this land-loving lollygagging. I'm a plunder me some treasure. Don't worry about me, my friend. Go cure your wife. Finally free, but now my pox crazed wife is nowhere to be found. A mad scientist is hunting her for who knows what reason, and the legendary voodoo sponge that was supposed to cure her is turned out to be useless. Under normal circumstances, I'd ask the voodoo lady for help, but she's sitting in the jail cell next to my arch enemy, who may or may not be my best friend, after it's been revealed that she has been the secret power behind most of my travails over most of my life as a pirate. Maybe I should have been a beekeeper like my Uncle Sid. Well, Chuck! Guy Brush! I would have bet my good hand I'd never say this, but thank you. For what? I caused you nothing but despair. For taking the fall back there, and for exposing the voodoo lady. I don't know what to make of any of it, but now I can focus on saving Elaine and dealing with the pox. It is the very least I could do. But be careful, Guybrush. I'm always careful. This from the guy who proposed to his wife with the cursed engagement ring you stole from my hold? Is that a dig? Is the evil demon pirate LeChuck developing a sense of humor? This is weird. Where have you been? I thought you were with Elaine. Well, after leaving Spinner K, Elaine and I set out to finish releasing all those monkeys I'd captured. After we were finished releasing the last of them, Elaine caught wind of your trial, went into a poxed rage, seized a passing clam schooner, and made a beeline for Flotsam Island. That's my girl. Needless to say, I took my own vessel and headed after her. But in the middle of the night, my ship was sunk by a rogue wave. I was washed up on an island of cannibals, from whom I deftly escaped using many of the self-same skills you taught me back on the jerkbait islands. Well, it's amazing how easily man-eating tribes can be reasonable. Knowing I needed to get here more than ever, I lashed together a few bits of cannibal leftovers and warthog sinew to build a makeshift raft. Unfortunately, that was soon eaten by the sharks. Oh no! So I swam. I swam as fast as I could for three days. And arrived just in time to save me from the gallows. Nicely done, buddy. Kudos to your swim instructor. I was fueled by the fire of our budding friendship. Have you seen Elaine? No, not since she left me in a poxed rage. He's been doing a lot of that lately. I can't believe the voodoo lady has been pulling your ghostly slash demonic strings all these years. It came as a shock to me as well. But her diary spells it all out. You, me, Elaine, we're all part of the voodoo lady's malevolent plans. Malevolence is in the eye of the beholder, Guybrush Treepwood. I know this is difficult to understand, but things are not as they seem. No, things seem remarkably convoluted, which is what I've come to expect from you. I've always had your best interests at heart. Well, what about my interests? Without your meddling, I could have lived a normal, happy pirate's life. Ha! The destiny of LeChuck has never been normal. I risked life, limb, and manatee to get La Esponja Grande, and it's a puny, worthless lump. What? 
Soak up the gargantuan wonder that is La Esponja Grande. That is La Esponja Grande? But wasn't it supposed to hold infinite amounts of voodoo? I know. What a crock. The size of the sponge is meaningless. It is what you do with it that matters. Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, well, you, you fight, fight like, like a... a... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sit tight, buddy. Once I save Elaine, you're next. Don't worry about me. Hey, you! Hello, Treepwood. You sent me on a wild albatross chase for La Esponja Grande and promised me it would cure the pox. But after fending off sexually ambiguous merpeople, a giant manatee, and your crazy ex-boyfriend, what do I get for my trouble? This sorry excuse for a kitchen sponge. La Esponja. Ah, I noticed you strategically left out the Grande from this worthless piece of junk. Once it cured my piddly leftover pox, it didn't have enough mojo left to cure Elaine. It's not worthless. It is merely young. It must be brought to maturity in order to reach its voodoo-absorbing potential. Brought to maturity? How am I supposed to do that? Give it a talk about the sponge birds and sponge bees? Like all infants, La Esponja needs nourishment. It must be fed six special voodoo courses to bring it to adult size. What sort of meal is that? A feast for the senses. The menu, Treepwood. Take it and served a sponge a meal unlike any other. And then? It will grow. Hey, neat. There's a map of the Flotsam Jungle on the cover. No more listening to bees and birds and boars for this mighty pirate. Hmm. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. Hey, you! Again! Hello, Treepwood. You've been lying to me about LeChuck all these years! My ways are my own, Guybrush. But rest assured, I have never lied to you. You're lying right now! All this time, I thought LeChuck was an inhuman monster. Actually, he was an inhuman monster, but only because you made him that way. Did I? Or was I merely playing my role in a much larger play? Stop trying to confuse me. We're tired of being puppets in your chess game. This is no game, Treepwood. You corrupted LeChuck and sent him out to torment me in a lane for years. I'll never trust you again. I don't require your trust, Treepwood. Only your heroism. At Coronado de Cava. My beloved. How was he? Mad. Bipolar. Life ruined. Just another pawn sacrificed in your theater of the damned. I never meant to cause him harm. Sure you didn't. Come on, admit it. You were manipulating Coronado. Coronado was never touched by my voodoo, even though he sometimes begged to be. Uh, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing anymore, so I'll just shut up. Have you seen Elaine? Of course, even if you have, I won't believe you. So whether I have or have not does not matter. Well, if you do, tell the Chuck and then have him tell me. So, when I was with Dakava, you might have felt something strange happen. Ah. Uh. You are no doubt alluding to your brief possession of my physical form. Ha! How did it feel to be the Manipulate Ted instead of the Manipulate Tor for once? It was... curiously liberating. You're weird. About this feast for the senses... What would you like to know? The first course in the feast for the senses. The napkin. What's up with that? The table must be set with an eye-catching napkin to entice the sponge's hunger. The 
antipasta? Explain. With the table set, a powerful aroma must encourage the appetite to grow. I think my nose has been in shock since traversing the inside of a manatee. I'm sure you will find something. Can you tell me about the palate cleanser? Before the main course, the palate must be scalded clean by a powerful taste. Ooh, like grog? No, not at all like grog. It says here that course four, the main course, is the sixth sense. It doesn't even make sense. Ah, but it does. For where the other five senses are limited to the finite experiences of the present, the sixth sense satiates the appetite for the infinite possibilities of the future. The future? How do I feed something the future? You already hold the answer to that question. What about the dessert? This is one hungry sponge. Ah. What is your favorite thing about dessert, Guy Brash? Running out before the check arrives? No, it is the pleasurable shock of something different. Ah. It says the feast for the senses ends with a bellowing belch. Do not worry about this. If you provide La Esponja the first five courses, the location of the final course will undoubtedly reveal itself. Ah, my favorite type of responsibility. The one that takes care of itself. Alright, enough about the feast for now. Yeah, try not to get executed before I cure Elaine. As you wish. Stan! Threepwood! No hard feelings over all those various civil and criminal charges? Water under the bridge. Great. A bridge with a fast-talking shyster slash salesman dangling from it. Ooh. Still trying to make a buck on my recently cleared name? Nah, I sold all that junk to that Dooro sap. I moved on to the next trial of the century. Flotsam Island versus LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady. Yeah, how are sales going now? Great! People can't get enough of the voodoo lady's murky, moral ambiguity, mysterious, unexplored backstory, and her ample... La 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 la, I'm not listening, la la la... ...voodoo charms. And as for the Chuck, well, let's just say the lady pirates love, love, love a tale of redemption. The whole bad boy made good angle. Ah. Uh. Have the Voodoo Lady and LeChuck been put on trial yet? Have they? It's the trial of the century! E, e, e. Wait, I thought I was the trial of the century! E, 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 e. Yesterday's news, Threepwood. So, what kind of case are you building against LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady? Oh, I'm not prosecuting them. I'm defending them. What? Why? Why do I do anything, Threepwood? Money, pieces of eight, filthy lucre. That voodoo lady babe is loaded. Funny thing though, she only let me take the case if I defend LeChuck too. Funny like a peg leg. What kind of souvenirs could you possibly be making out of the voodoo lady and LeChuck? Oh ye of little faith. Feast your eyes on the all new People vs. LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady collection. What's this? It's a little decorative pin I've whipped up. Trial of the Century 2. Electric Voodoo. We're still working on a type. What's that one? That's our cursed cutlass of Kaflu LeChuck doll. Press the button for its special transforming glow. What's happening? Uh, it's a little bright. Yeah, we're still working out a few kinks. that? It's my entrancing voodoo lady dashboard good luck charm. Ugh, disturbing. Mm, on second thought, say no more. Have you seen my wife? Have I? That crazy sea devil hit me up for one of my patented and perfectly passable porcelain powered pirate treasure maps before hightailing it for the jungle. If we're lucky, that thing will keep her going around in circles for weeks. 
I don't suppose you'd be willing to sell me your eye-bending jacket. Give up my jacket? That'd be like Samson getting a buzz cut, or King Arthur losing Excalibur, or Bluebeard dying himself blonde. Huh? Without my jacket, my salesman Mojo would wither away faster than a hothouse orchid in a pizza oven. So, that's a maybe? Sure you don't want to sell me your pupil-defying jacket? It's for a good cause. This jacket stays with Stan until it literally falls off my back, Threepwood. Something sure shoved a short sword up his aft sail. trouble. Found Jacques. He told me. What? He told me. What? What did the monkey tell you? broken. This must have been broken in the fight between Morgan and DeSinge. I hope the Vol escaped. It'd take a seven-year correspondence course in mad sciencing before I'd even have a hope of fixing that thing. Darn. No more bananas. Curse you, banana god! Vampiridae flotsimus sucrosus, the flotsam jungle firefly, are a common sight in flotsam's jungles, which they never leave. Although possessing no natural enemies, the flotsamus sucrosus has a notorious sweet tooth, drawing it inexorably to bodies of sugar water. It looks like the singe is using my hand to make something called the jus de vie. A Vacalian wind control device? What is that creep doing with it now? Did the singe murder you too? Lepidoptera flotsamus accelerus. Like many of its more common cousins, the sharp toothed flotsam island moth has a penchant for noshing on articles of clothing. Where Flotsamus Accelerus differs is in the pain of its bites, which can be quite annoying, and the rapidity of its meals. A swarm of Flotsam moths can strip a man down to his undergarments in mere seconds, assuming the notoriously finicky moths approve of his wardrobe, of course. Auto Trepanation Helmet. Hmm. Ow! Um, help? Ow! Ah! 
I'm blind! Ew. Ow! What the? Duh. What is my thumb? Yeah, did that blah. It's locked. It's locked. Oh no. This is where the Marquis keeps all the severed limbs of the pirates he's operated on. Hmm. Hey, you never know when a sack of severed legs is going to come in handy. Or footy, as the case may be. Sorry. It's a sack full of severed legs. Ooh. Hi there, double peg. Have you seen my wife? I tore through here like a cat out of hell, off into the jungle. See ya. In the name of Bluebeard's hair dye. Hey, no poaching! I have called dips. I think I may be lost. Shouldn't there be a creepy voodoo shack right about there? There was. Until they came to arrest that talk spreading voodoo lady. What happened? First came the flames. Poor Senor Nipperkin went up like St. Elmo's fire. Then she emerged from the conflagration, mumbling ancient curses with every regal step. I'll never forget the baleful stare she fixed me with as she was left away. And look, condemning me to a lifetime of suffering, shame, and regret. Okay. And if that wasn't bad enough, I, I haven't found one bit of cool voodoo stuff in the wreckage. Come on! Mob justice can be so unfair. Even when it's burned to the ground, the voodoo lady's shack is still creepy. Looks like the light of the shack's embers has attracted a swarm of jungle moths. That probably explains what happened to the voodoo lady's rug. Whoa! Uh-oh. Looks like these finicky moths won't eat a jacket that's encrusted with bacon grease, fish water, and manatee guts. Lucky me.
All right, little fellas, check out these high def duds. Well, that's just great. The lamp's dead. Well, at least Stan's sign is keeping the moths from returning to the jungle. Hey there, youngster. I know you're curious about the behind-the-scenes working of Stan's courtroom emporium, but I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to step away from the door. Why? Because that's where Stan works his magic, kid. It's where my dreams become reality. And some of my realities become dreams. So it's where you're sleeping? Yeah, but only until this souvenir business picks up. Stan! Guybrush, old pal! Can I take another look at your voodoo lady and the Chuck Goo Gaws? Can't keep your eyes off them, huh? What's that one? That's our cursed cutlass of Kaflu, the Chuck doll. Press the button for its special transforming glow. What's happening? Uh, it's a little bright. Yeah, we're still working out a few kinks. Hey, now, what's this? A fuzzy flying fan club? Ah! Hey, knock it off, you nutty nibblers! That ah, that hurts. Sweet ah, fancy ah, Moses! Ah, ow! Ah, ow! 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 Ouch! Well, that was one heck of an experience, eh, Threepwood? It's a good thing old Stan always keeps a few spare jackets in the back office, or I'd be defending my clients in the all together. Say, that's not a bad idea. Stan S. Stan Man, naked attorney at law. You've got nothing to hide, and neither does he. Um... No time to chat, Threepwood. I've got business cards to print. Sweet. You know, when I dreamed of becoming a mighty pirate, I never imagined that one day I'd be tying eye-popping napkins around the non-existent necks of mystical sponges. i better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. That's the sacrificial altar of the jungle beast that Hemlock was rambling about. Alas, poor Hemlock. I knew it, this limb, a leg of infinite toe jam, of most excellent thigh cheese. It hath borne its owner's creaking frame a thousand times, and now how clammy and gross within my grasp it wriggles. Oh well. Soup's on. Uh-oh. This whole idol is under one of Crimp Digit's unbreakable glass bottles. Hmm, the tide must be high. I can almost reach down and touch the well water. Jungle Fireflies, nature's little spotlights. Hmm. 
the fireflies are attracted to the sugar water on the leg. Fascinating. And just a little nauseating. Now that I know a little bit more about the Vacalians, it appears that we're nearing the end of the year of the fish and approaching the dawn of the year of the slightly bigger fish. to a briny pulp with him. What are you looking at? The secret to eternal life. Le spectre de Grand César. <laughs> Doesn't look like Elaine's in any immediate danger. Hopefully she won't commit any unforgivable atrocities before I finish enlarging my pox-curing sponge. didn't go anywhere. I don't know about mythical jungle beasts, but I always prefer my ritual sacrifices to be slathered in sugar water. I don't know about mythical jungle beasts, but I always prefer my ritual sacrifices to be slathered in sugar water. I've lost that she devil. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Serves him right though. Still, I'd better finish feeding the sponge before Elaine hurts someone I actually care about. The mighty pirate hunter tracks his prey via his distinctive firefly attracting spoor. That's the legendary jungle beast of Flotsam Island? That poor little flesh eating stink bomb looks like he's in a world of pain. Those jaws will snap me in twain if I get too close. Or maybe even Thwain. Oh, look at that. The poor hideous flesh-eating plant is a smelly, rotting lion's paw caught in its teeth. Um, thorns. Hold still, little buddy. I'll get that nasty old hunk of meat out for- Yikes! I haven't got it in me to kill this miserable flesh-rending plant creature thing. What the- it's empty! Here, boy! Ooh, that looks uncomfortable, but at least he's not snapping at me anymore. Don't worry, you freakish little abomination. Dr. Guybrush will make it all better. Gotcha! you! <laughs> that is by far the foulest thing I've ever smelled in all my years of pirating. And that's coming from a guy who's just spent a few days inside a giant manatee. Come on, little sponge. Eat the nice, smelly anti-pasta. That's a good sponge.
I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. Hello, Treepwood. Your hut is nothing more than a smoldering pile of rubble. Yes, a destruction of my own doing. But you had so much neat stuff. Just your shadowing, your creepy rug, all those skulls, and that mysterious machine in the corner that didn't do anything. The objects of utmost importance were taken care of, stored away in a safe place. Where? You have the knowledge of its whereabouts with you right now. You must know how, not where, to look. Couldn't you just tell me directly? I would, but the walls have ears. Eyes. They have eyes. About this feast for the senses? What would you like to know? Palate cleanser. Hmm. Something of such grand flavor as to send the senses back to square one. Big flavor. Got it. All right, enough about the feast for now. Elaine and Morgan have made a dog's breakfast of your buffet. What? That mess? Oh, pshaw, my boy! That's just the typical aftermath of our weekly ladies' night buffet table. <laughs> our lady pirates may be easy on the eyes, but heaven help you if you get between them and our bottomless salad bowl. Thanks. La Sponja Grande is only good for soaking up voodoo. Like the pox. WP? I told you I was innocent. Well, bully for you! Uh, meanwhile, we're still all poxed, there's a creepy voodoo priestess in my jail, and your wife's still threatening to sack our town. Truly, these are the best of times. Looks like ladies' night has finally come to an end. I... I'm thinking about cancelling it in favor of something a wee bit safer. Like Ultimate Mumbly Pig Night or Amateur Tattoo Night. <laughs> Morgan Le Flay's been murdered by the Marquis de Singe! Oh my, that is troubling. She was well on her way to becoming one of me best customers. Weren't you gonna do something? Oh, I'm sorry, lad, but I preside over a pirate court, meeting out justice exclusively for pirate-on-pirate -pirate crimes. <coughs> this, this sounds like a case of mad scientist on privateer violence. Uh, totally out of my jurisdiction, you see. I think there may be a court in the lower mandibles that handles such affairs, along with ninja and clown crimes, uh, but they only convene every second Thursday. Barkeep, I'd like to order a drink. What'll it be? How about some more of those volcano shots? Sorry, uh, one per customer. Barkeep, I'd like to order a drink. What'll it be? One grog. Neat. Coming right up. Ah, bracing. Uh, 
Are you pirate enough to take the Fugu Jolokia challenge? Fugu Jolokia. Seems pretty harmless. Hey, WP. Tell me about this Fugu Jolokia challenge. Ah, a connoisseur of peculiar culinary delights, are we? Um, yes? Then you surely have heard of the Fugu Jolokia, the hottest pepper in this world or the next. Oh, that Fugu Jolokia. I acquired that specimen of the Fugu pepper many years ago from a three-legged bandit named Ort, winning it from him when I was able to place me tongue on the pepper for ten entire seconds. How eccentric. Since that tongue-destroying day, I vowed to pass on the pepper to the first pirate who can successfully put his tongue on the Fugu Jolokia for 11 seconds. Fugu Jolokia. Seems pretty harmless. Hey, WP. I'd like to take the Fugu Jolokia challenge. I thought you looked like a man of gastronomic adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a challenger! Whoopee! Whenever you're ready, lad. Okay, Pepper, prepare to meet your master. Okay, mental note. The Fugu Jolokia is hot to the touch, too. Hey, WP. I'd like another crack at that frugal Jojo Rococo Pepper. Back into the breach, eh? Admirable spirit! Have at it! Ah, now that's using your mighty pirate brain, Threepwood. Ouch. Hey, Krebs. What do you want? Hey, Krebs. Now that your case has been dismissed, care to join me in a little post-trial amicus curiae? Was that a pickup line? I don't know. My Latin's a little rusty. Guess they decided to put the rug inside after it was clean. Ouch! to Morgan's body. <laughs> Refreshing. Ow! What is it? My thumb!
did yeah blah, Vugu Jalokia. Seems pretty harmless. Hey WP. Let's try another round with that Fuji Blagojevich thingy. Are you sure, lad? I'm starting to think you're not cut out for this. Set me up. <sighs> Ouch! Streets. Well done, Captain Threefoot! You've conquered the Fugu Jalokia and have won the right to keep it as your own. I like a clean living and a healthy co- oh. Probably got permanent glossal damage, but it was totally worth it to get my hook on that pepper. Good thing the sponge doesn't have a tongue, or I'd be dunking it in the ocean right about now. Well, that's odd. It's like a whole new map now. decided to put the rug inside after it was clean.
I wonder who put this idol under glass, and why? I wonder who put this idol under glass, and why? I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. It's the mysterious chest of foreshadowing from the Voodoo Lady's shack. Who knows what sort of useful voodoo bric-a-brac lurk in its locked timbers. Even more importantly, how am I going to unlock it to find out? Let's see, what do I have now that I didn't have the last time I tried to open this chest? Ow! Stupid hook! Oh, it can't be that easy. The Voodoo Lady's tarot cards? That's it? I bent the fabric of reality for a stupid fortune teller's trick? Okay, that's a pretty good trick. Hopefully these flakes of the future will give La Esponja a sixth sense that'll help keep me from getting into situations like this. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. They decided to put the rug inside after it was cleaned. Stop doing that! No! Ooh. Ooh. Tingly. Well, hey, what's this? Ah, so that was the shocking dessert. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. Ouch! All right, Senor Esponja Not So Grande, that's five senses down and one to go. Now, where can I find a really big sound for an after-dinner belch? Uh, 
There's only one thing on Flotsam Island that can make a noise like that. You heard the lady de singe. Guybrush, get out of here and find your own treasure. This one's mine. Ah, the happy Threepwood Pirate Clan. <laughs> Whatever shall I do now? Oh, I know. Oh, clam dip. Ha! I can't believe I ever married a dullard like you. You know, once I cure you of the pox that's making you say all these mean things, you're gonna owe me a lot of smoochies. I wouldn't smooch you with his lips, cabin boy. <clears throat> I hate to break up this portrait of domestic bliss, <laughs> but I've got some last-minute adjustments to make to my machinery before preparing the charming Madame Sripwood for her journey into scientific history. Don't worry, Buttercup. Once I get La Esponja Grande into that noisy doohickey, our troubles will be over. Mm, yes. Well, please try to keep it down, no? At least I hope so. Hey, DeWinge! That's DeSange. Whatever. What are you doing to the wind control device? It sounds like it's about to explode. I'm so glad you asked. You see, using my unbuilt of the chronotone in conjunction with my scope to seek out the resonant frequency with the Vecalian climatophone, I hope to anatomize living tissue on a macroscopic basis. Duh. Did you run through the purpose of all this machinery again? Messiah, I'm going to use this machine to make that machine smash people into a fine powder. Hey, that's not very nice. All right, Destrange, you've got me where you want me. Now let my wife go. You? <laughs> I don't want you and your pathetically puck free body anymore. <laughs> your wife, on the other hand, is teeming with this special Threepwood strand of the pucks I need to create more of my jeu de vie. Let me get this straight. You don't want me anymore? Not in the slightest. It's your wife's juicy strain of the pox that fuels my scientific longings now. I've got your juicy strain right here, bucko! You'll pay for what you did to Morgan, you fiend! I already did pay for her services! A big sack of silver, as I recall. Not for that! For killing her! Pirates and pirate hunters. Your kind always seem to meet an early demise. Good riddance. I saw you run out of the lab after you murdered her! Of course I ran out of my lab. There was blood all over the floor, instead of being packed neatly in vials where it belonged. I still think you murdered Morgan. Oh, the mighty pirate thinks I murdered his friend. However will I live with his shame. What's my hand doing up there on that turban? Your hand is nobly sacrificing the last dribs and drabs of its wondrous box to supply me with enough death-defying Judy V to keep me intact until I spread your wife's box across the sea. Poor little fellow looks horrible. Sadly, yes. I suspect he will not survive. Oh well, Philly Judy V. So why a turban? Shouldn't you have a beret or some other French chapeau? French? Whatever gave you the ridiculous idea that I'm French? But, um, I mean, I just kind of assumed... <laughs> what, the nerve of some people? <laughs> what the heck is that thing supposed to do? This is my Archicronaton, which I can use to remotely manipulate the Vecalian's wind control device without all that tedious mugging about in the jungle with ancient idols. Can't say as I blame you. All that running and spinning and weather banning did get on my nerves after a while. Can't believe that stupid parrot somehow found its way back into my life. 
It's me, Guybrush Streetboy, Whitey Pirate. Oh, I can't say no to you. Whatever DeSinge is doing to the Vakalian wind control device, it can't be good. What's that? That is a bucket of water. I assume that these idols under glass are your doing? Me? Using a complex series of powerful unbreakable vacuum tubes and my own incredible machine. I've centralized the control of the Vegelian wind control device to this relatively compact Apsychronotron. So what have you been up to while I've been out trying to save your shapely bacon? I've been swashbuckling and looking for buried treasure, like a real pirate! Okay, I know that's the pox talking, but still... Ouch! Don't worry, Angel... Uh, face. Everything will be okay once I toss La Esponjagrana into that noisy ancient doohickey. Then stop your yakking and get on with it, you gibbering jellyfish! Once I get you cured, we should go break LeChuck out of jail. That spineless great two boats! Him rot. Did you hear? The voodoo lady's been playing us for chumps all these years. Arr! I never did trust that scheming sea witch. The singe killed Morgan. He did? Well, maybe the cheese eating beaker monkey ain't so bad after all. Ha <laughs> ha! Chill out. I got this. <sighs> I don't think that's opening up without one of those seahorse key things. Too bad I lost mine. Hey, it's the moths. I bet they're still punch drunk off his damn spunky fashions. Oh, what the heck. Sweet. Oh, shiny. Chill out. I've got this. Soul. What? Ah, pirate humor. La Sponja Grande is only good for soaking up voodoo. It's like the pox. What's this? An airborne peripheral? Hey, give that back! <laughs> and risk tainting my moment of triumph with your tedious voodoo falderal. <laughs> I don't think so. Moment of triumph? <laughs> we, using my Arpsychronoton, I have discovered the unique harmonic frequency that allows me to pulverize matter into a fine powder and spread it across the seas. <laughs> Observe! <laughs> it's me, Guybrush Streetboy, Whitey Pirate. It's me! First of all, thanks. That thing was really starting to scrape my scab. Second, you're crazy if you think you're gonna get me in there. Okay, crazier. You? <laughs> I don't want you. <laughs> it's your wife's molecules I need to smear across the seas. I'd like to see you try, you wuss. Why her? Because of her box, you don't. She's got the same unique strain of the pox that you once had. The same one that was flowing through your amazing hand. The same one that I've distilled into my amazing jus de vie. Lefty! Unfortunately, a single hand can only provide enough of the Sweepwood strain to produce a few meager drums of my jus de vie. 
Even if I were to drain your beloved to the bone, I would only gain a few piddling firkins of the juice. I'll give you some piddling firkins? No. If I want a perpetual shrine of the jus de vie, every pirate in the world must be exposed to the Sweepwood strain. Now, Madame Sweepwood, if you'll hold still for a moment, I'll try to make this as painless as possible. How nice. But I won't! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Behold the power of the jus de vie! Hey, boo! What now? <sighs> what in the world? Oh, shoot! Those clothes munching moths must be attracted to the glowing lights of the wind machine's eyes. Singe is gonna use that contraption to pulverize my sweet patootie! That doesn't need to be illuminated. I don't wanna dig my hook into that. I don't know where it's been. Hey, the monkey! What? You'll never get past my wife's sword, you know. I once saw her hold off a horde of angry Rotarians with nothing more than a pen knife and a feather duster. Yeah, impressive. But unless they were invulnerable Rotarians fueled by my incredible jus de vie, there's really no compelling. Soon she will tire, and her box will be mine to spread across the four corners of the earth. I'll spread you to the four corners! Uh, what now? My tabin! No! You shoot! Oh, get away from me, you nasty little pest! No! What's the matter with him? Without my hand to supply him with more jus de vie, all those wounds you've been inflicting are starting to catch up with him. Ugh. Oh, get back here, you naughty little lad! <laughs> I have you now, my pretty. <laughs> nice one, Hand. You care to help me with these locks? I guess that was a little too much to ask. At least I've got the sponge back, though. Don't worry, Angel of Face. Everything will be okay once I toss Sly Spongebrana into that noisy ancient doohickey. Then stop your yakking and get on with it, you gibbering jellyfish! Well, that was a little antic for Mac. That's an Esponja Grande! But how will I use it to cure- Oh, right! The wind! Tastes like coleslaw. It's a long story. I'll tell you all about it once we figure out how to get out of these stupid clamshells. Leave everything to me, my friends. Look, Chuck, my new best pal. 
How'd you get out of jail? Oh, the guard was more than happy to release me once I convinced him that it was the only way to win Elaine's hand in unholy matrimony. Wait, unholy what? Unholy this! Guybrush! Elaine? <laughs> Guybrush! The truck! <laughs> this name shouting is jolly good fun! Is that you, Mother? I washed my hands. Knew it all along. With or without all that voodoo, you're still nothing but an evil sack of scum. Correction, my sweet. I'm an evil sack of scum who's about to plunder the grandest treasure in all creation. But I'd be willing to share my booty if you catch me drift. What? Oh, come now, my love. You can't deny what we've shared these past few weeks. The chummy camaraderie, the kind words, the stolen glances. I know you've developed feelings for me. Join me as my demon bride, and together we'll lay a bloody siege to the very heart of voodoo itself! Go to hell, the Chuck. Well, you can't say I didn't try. Looks like we'll be doing this with all that voodoo. Elaine? Uh, do me a favor. Ah! That be the stuff! Anything. Kick is two faced, but for me. From melee to monkey and all the islands in between, my love. <laughs> Aren't you dead yet? I've got wedding plans to make. Out of respect for the newly deceased, I feel I should point out that you wave your sword like a dairy farmer. How appropriate. You fight like a pox-infected undead cow. 